got this from a nice little coffee shop outside of Chicago. This is called a red eye. And that's kind of what it is. Greetings with another checks and balances video here. What I'd like to talk about today is the difference between facts and opinions. The difference between sensations and beliefs. That type of topic. Because today, uh, I was thinking about a couple social media posts that I saw on science pages, where folks are taught, now, keep in mind, I don't know anything really about meteorology, I've never really studied it, outside of what I learned about clouds in school and things like that, alright? So I'm thinking from a point of strict logic here, folks, keep that in mind. I'm not a master of this data by any sense of the imagination, by any stretch of the imagination. However, I can form my own conclusions or reasonable guesses about the, sub the subject. So I saw a post where someone said, do you see those big, thick, I think the word is cumulonimbulus clouds in the sky that carry rain. The dark, big, dark, heavy looking clouds, heavy looking clouds, right? They can weigh up to three million tons. I saw this on a, on a science page. Someone said that a rain cloud in the sky can weigh up to three million tons. So me, being a smarty pants, left a comment where I said, don't tell gravity that, or good thing gravity doesn't know about that, or some, something like that. And they responded to me saying the word buoyancy. That buoyancy works, and that's why the cloud does not fall to the earth like everything else. So buoyancy is the exception to the rule. Buoyancy is what keeps the cloud in the sky as opposed to anything else. What kind of heaping horse caca is that? Because if buoyancy is a thing, right? If a cloud has an outer layer to it or whatever it is that keeps the moisture in there and then at some point I'd have to think logically that the cloud becomes uh, the molecules become uh, less dense and it allows the rain to come out and the rain the water falls to the earth but where does buoyancy have why doesn't buoyancy keep the water up there what material is the cloud that it is affected by buoyancy but water is not it's like taking a balloon a water balloon if you take a balloon and just put oxygen in it what does it do it kind of floats around on the ground right it doesn't go into the air it doesn't if you hold it in the air it doesn't float in the air it falls to the ground but if you put water in that balloon, the, it falls immediately to the ground. So what material are these cumulonimbus clouds made out of that causes them to be affected by something called buoyancy? And I thought buoyancy only worked in liquids. But then again, I don't know what's up in the atmosphere. Never been there. I've been 40,000 feet up in an airplane, and I've seen clouds below me but I've never been outside I don't it looks like it's just air up there to me so what is it how is it that that happens it doesn't make any logical sense to me my point in saying this is that they're going through to from my mind all of these mental gymnastics for what to explain a concept called gravity 
Well, I guess then you got to say, oh, well, there's an exception to every rule, and buoyancy is the exception to gravity. Really? Okay. And gravity is contingent upon a ball spinning through a sea of space. Again, something else I can't prove. Holy cow, my phone almost flew off the dash because the earth is spinning so fast. I better be careful next time. Someone once told me, well, you can't feel the earth spinning because everybody's spinning at the same speed, so it seems like we're standing still. Oh, I get it. So you're moving so fast and everybody's at the same speed that it doesn't feel like you're moving. So if you're in a car going 120 miles an hour down the highway, you and your passenger, you don't have a sense that you're moving? If you're in an airplane, you know, going hundreds of miles an hour, you don't feel like you're moving? What the hell kind of drugs are these people on? That that's a, a, a valid reason for them. The fact is, I don't know if there's a such thing as gravity. I don't know what shape the earth is. The fact is, I don't know really anything about cumulonimbus clouds or anything like that. All that I can prove is what I can see, hear, smell, taste, touch, and feel. That's it. Facts certified by a continuance of the evidence. That's why you're not going to find concepts like God or ghosts or demons or any other non-certifiable concepts in my correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar contracts and if you really want to get closure on this grammar and you really want to be successful in using it I highly recommend that you only put it, the facts in your contracts your document contract postal vessel court venues that you can certify and prove otherwise you're gonna run into problems if someone calls to you, you to the carpet and says Prove what God is. Show me your God right here, right now. Show me gravity right here, right now. Show me the shape of the earth right here, right now. Prove it to me. Show me your ghost. Show me whatever. Because normally in a correct sentence structure contract, you'd have to show damage. Usually it's a damage claim. How? What was the trespass and how did it damage you? Show a continuance of the evidence. Otherwise... It's just going to fall to pieces. It's going to fall down just like the water falls out of the cumulonimbus cloud down to the earth. Because void buoyancy, I guess. All right, I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you.